So now I wanna move on to resolve. And that word is literally in Latin, you just break apart the thing again. You have re, which means to put your mind to something, to actively do something, and then you have solve, like solve a problem. In Latin, that literally means to loosen. Something could be tight, like a cookie jar. You have to solve the problem of how to get a cookie. You have to loosen the jar and open it. We have to set our mind to something. And you can have personal resolve. Like some people are very determined is another word for that. Resolve is, is firm determination to do something. So as we remember Christ and remember what he's done and remember what he's called us to do, we can make these resolutions. And I wanna use one of my favorite prayers in scripture to guide us. It is 2 Thessalonians 1, 11 and 12. It says this. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 11 here, Paul makes it clear that um, because he's praying this over the church that our God wants to fulfill every one of our resolves if, if they are for doing good according to God's definition of good, if they are works of faith, if they are done by his power, and if ultimately they are giving Christ Jesus the glory for what it is. It says that God wants to fulfill those resolves for good. He wants to do that. So there can be resolutions that we make that God says, yes, I want you to do these things. I want you to walk into this. So we know that we're encouraged to do it. And as Paul is praying this, so what from this scripture can we resolve to do in 2023? I'm gonna keep it simple. There can be a list of a hundred things that you wanna do, but ultimately I conclude this. We need to pray. Paul is constantly in prayer for himself, constantly in prayer for individuals in scripture, and he's constantly in prayer for all of these individual churches that he helped plant. That's what, to this end, we always pray for you. And when he writes that, I believe him. And Paul says, pray without ceasing. He was the one that said that. And he, he was praying in jail. He was praying all the time that we see him doing ministry, especially in tough times. Paul was a praying person. And I know that this is an important resolution for us to do, to pray more, because if you ever ended a year and say, man, I prayed too much, because I don't think it's possible. And I think that's a good test of like, what should you do more of? Something that you can't do too much of. I don't think we can pray enough. And that tells me that we should be doing it more. Prayer, we've talked about a lot as a church and our pastor is truly a praying man. And that's why I love being around him because he reminds us to stop and pray and the importance of prayer. But prayer is stopping to acknowledge that I am not in control of anything and that the world around us is not in my control, it is in God's control. We remember that our God is the one that is in control of all things. Um, and really like when we pray like that, it should cause us to rest and be like, yes, I, I don't have any of this under control, but you do. And I've been asked to pray and told to pray. It should cause us to rest, to reset to reorient our day and our lives, but it also causes us to remember. Prayer is one of those things that constantly gets us in that remembering state of who Christ is and what he's done for you. Remembering what you should do, what good works you should walk into is done through prayer. R.C. Sproul said, the chief rule of prayer is to remember who God is and to remember who you are. If we remember those two things, our prayers will always and ever be marked by adoration and confession. And those are two very important things to be marked by in our prayer is proclaiming who God is and remembering who we are and confessing where we have fallen short. Next Monday, January 9th, uh, we're gonna start 21 days of prayer as a church. And I love doing this in the new year. I love praying together. There's camaraderie. When you know hundreds of people are praying the exact same thing every single day, it just like, it, it excites me. It makes me um, just so happy to be a part of a church family but we're praying specifically this year for revival in three different areas. We're praying for revival individually in our lives, for God to stir up and to revive me and to revive every single one of us, to revive us as a church, as a whole, to make sure that we are for God's kingdom and we are doing what God wants us to do. And then praying for revival in this community, praying for the people in the communities when we're gonna be door knocking in the next couple Saturdays praying for revival there. And you're gonna hear a whole much more about that next week from our pastor, but um, let's look at the scripture and what else can we resolve to do? We pray first, but what else can we do in 2023?